This is episode 21 of the History of Podcast. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma. And today we will be talking about the history of bowling. And uh, as always, first we have the egg carton count. Today's egg carton count is... It's uh, 25. Same as last time, but I think we have one more egg carton on the way. So we're good. Um, you know, it'll it'll be 26 next time, I hope. Yeah, we're, we're staying above ep- the episode number, so that's We're getting scarily good. close, though, which I don't like, but we'll we'll work on improving that. Anyway, my my friend, I, I have a friend named Bruce who has a study hall period. Shout out to Bruce. Bruce. And sometimes uh, during study hall, he checks out and goes bowling. Uh, we actually have a bowling alley next door to the school. It's pretty great. He scored a 202 before. That's that's insane. Yeah. Y'all. When I go bowling, I it, it's an accomplishment if I get over 100. It's pretty sad. I am the expert in uh, the granny bowling uh is, is that how you do it you squat down and you like just try to bowl sadly that's how i usually get most of my points <laughs> now if you had to guess robert where bowling first started where would you guess mm, egypt <laughs> yeah obviously is most things seem to originate in egypt now egyptian bowling was less structured than what we know today there's a hieroglyphic of someone looking someone royal looking holding a weighted ball like they're about to roll it so i mean kind of seems like bowling archaeologists also found some pins and a hallway that might have served as a bowling alley so that's pretty yeah neat. and uh the the polynesians also bowled uh, except they they didn't call it bowling they called it ula meika is that right it sounds right i hope um <laughs> Where um, the players they the players would roll a stone uh, to knock down pins which were sixty feet away. Wow! And actually, sixty feet is the regulation distance today. So it's amazing, it's amazing how that works, and it's amazing how people on the other side of the world, so there's Egypt and there are the Polynesians, Polynesian islands, are doing the same thing without talking to each other. Yeah, I guess they all just thought it was really cool to that's, knock stuff over. <laughs> that's it's interesting though how yeah. that pheno- phenomenon. Um, and like how how similar those things are, but there isn't um, much recorded history of bowling until third century Germany, third uh, century A.D. And there was an odd tradition or ritual, um, not quite sure what to call it, by the churches in Germany. Um, and so in Germany, there there's this thing called a kegel. A kegel, just bask in that word kegel kegel it's a fun word and fun word indeed it's more or less like uh, a club or a, a big stick that uh, german men carried around for self-defense makes sense and uh to prove to the church that you were living an upright life you would have to stand up your kegel at the end of a runway then you would roll a stone at the kegel across the runway and if you hit it you're good um not mm, too bad a little a little suspicious there Ooh. But people really believe this stuff. Oh my goodness. Well, I would not be doing super well in third century Germany. (laughs) Some people, or some historians rather, speculate that they took it one step further. Hitting the Kegel might have been believed to cleanse you of your sins. I don't believe that, but I guess they did at that time. Over time, people just started bowling for fun. It became less of an odd ritual and more of a game, which I get that, support that. And like there's, uh, I think it went into, you know, Northern Europe, kind of Northern Europe, kind of stayed in Eastern Europe, uh, bowling did. But in a thousand years later, in 1366, the first uh, real documented recorded history, I guess it's repetitive, real recorded history of bowling was in, uh, so 1366, King Henry III of England outlawed bowling, and it was considered a distraction from practicing archery. And uh, this might ring a bell from episode number two, Golf, where we mentioned King James II of Scotland, uh, who banned golf because it was a distraction from archery. But that was in 1457. These are two completely different events. Um, It looks, it, but, you know, Two different events, but it looks like it wasn't uncommon for different sports to be banned when preparing for war. I mean, I get it. They had their priorities, and, you know, self-defense is a little more important than just chilling Yeah, but I times. guess these were really considered a distraction. I guess. Most European bowling during this time was actually outdoor bowling, or lawn bowling. I mean, I get that. Lawn bowling has smaller balls, which are called bowls, instead of bowling balls. 
Interestingly enough, these bowls are weighted unevenly to make things less predictable. Gotta spice it up a little bit. There's a little twist in it. Yeah. Quite literally. <laughs> also, instead of aiming at pins, you're trying to hit a smaller ball called a jack. This makes it a lot similar to the Italian game bocce. You may have heard of bocce ball. Some yeah. hotels have so, it. <laughs> it's like, a, yeah, pretty much where you're just rolling a ball to hit a smaller ball. It's It has kind of the same origin. Right. Like indoor bowling, some versions of lawn bowls have gutters. Now, there are a range of different lawn bowling variations, way more than indoor bowling. Yeah, indoor bowling is like very structured, very regulated today, which we will talk about in a moment. But in the 15th century, uh, some wealthy lawn bowlers started building roofs over their lanes. Ooh. It's kind of a show of wealth. It's like a and garage for I would, a bowling lane. Yeah, I would think um, this is where indoor bowling started. But most historians actually believe lawn bowling and indoor pin bowling came from completely different origins. In 1511, under the rule of English King Henry VIII, bowling was banned for the lower classes in an effort to keep it only for the wealthy. You actually had to prove you had an annual income of at least 100 pounds to be able to play. That's so lame. I know. Henry VIII was a bowler himself. That's, that's sad. I yeah. just, I don't like that. Well, okay, bowling in America. Bowling began yes. pretty pretty early on in America. Um, it was, the first known recording of it was in the Jamestown Settlement in modern-day Virginia. Some say the Puritans uh, also bowled in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, which the Puritans are very different from the Pilgrims. Please do not confuse them. Um, but the, the, the Puritans still did bowl, but it was socially looked down upon because it was uh, associated with gambling, mm. as were several other forms of recreation, several other games. It technically was not illegal, though, and uh, this fact came through with a famous excavation in the 90s. It was in the Charleston area of Boston, Massachusetts, and the excavation revealed the house of a lady named Catherine Nanny Naylor. And Naylor was born in England in 1630, and her family moved to the New World in 1635. Uh, her mother died when she was young, so her father remarried to a lady named Mary Hutchinson, who was the sister of Anne Hutchinson. Does this ring a bell from U.S. history class? So this might take a minute just to absorb, but we are connecting some dots here. Now, Anne Hutchinson was well-known, but also kind of unpopular for teaching a heresy called antinomianism, I believe. Mm -hmm. She was banished by the Puritans and sent to Rhode Island. And she helped, I think she helped establish a settlement in Rhode Island. I would, that would make sense. It's interesting how all these dots are connecting slowly. Yes. Um, but back to the excavation of Catherine uh, Naylor's house. She was pretty comfortable on the money scaler. Her house is so famous because uh, it had one of the first bowls in America, which I guess bowl also refers to not just the ball, but also kind of... Bowling lane. Yeah, yeah, the, the lawn bowling lane. In other words, uh, she had some, some lawn bowling set up. Uh, a lot of Americans don't realize how popular lawn bowling is around the world. Like, it's, it's a thing around the world, just not really in America. I mean, some people do it. It's not as big in america it still exists and getting into the history of bowling in the past 200 years a few states in america actually banned bowling for a little while in the 1820s this was for the same reason the puritans shunned bowling because you know people gambled on it also in the 19th century uh, rules varied more depending on where you played and uh too many elective rules made things way too complicated so the national bowling association was formed in 1875 that didn't last very long, though. So a man named Joe Thumb standardized a set of rules with the United Bowling Clubs in New York. That was a big deal because American bowling in the 19th century followed the lead of just bowling in New York. It was kind of where pe New people looked to New York for bowling. New York had the highest influence in bowling and mm. bowling rules. And in 1895, the American Bowling Congress was founded. It didn't allow women, so in 1907... There was an unofficial national women's tournament. In 1917, the Women's International Bowling Congress, the WIBC, was founded. In the 1950s, uh, the first championship bowling was broadcast on NBC. Oh, wow. And in 1958, the Professional Bowlers Association, or PBA, was formed. And they would really take the lead on uh, professional bowling until, until today. Uh, they started broadcasting with ABC 
different ABC than American Bowling Congress, ABC, the, the broadcasting network. Uh, but they started broadcasting with ABC from the start. And one of the founders of PBA, uh, Eddie Elias, uh, Elias, Elias, I think it's Elias, 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 I'm going with Elias. Uh, Eddie Elias helped create the Pro Bowlers Tour, which was a regular on ABC Sports. And it's actually, uh, they moved to Fox Sports now. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that in just a moment. And uh, in 1971, PBA created the U.S. Open, which is one of their more famous tournaments. In 2000, the PBA was purchased by three entrepreneurs who were all former Microsoft executives. In 2019, just not that long ago, the association changed hands again to Bolero Corporation in order to promote the media side of things. And uh, the the White House has a bowling lane. Um, in 1947, President Truman was gifted uh, two bowling lanes in the West Wing of the White House for his birthday. That's an awesome birthday present. <laughs> I mean, when you're the president. He thought it was nice, um, but he didn't use it very much. Uh, however, he did encourage some White House officials in forming their own bowling league. And they competed in tournaments all over. Like, a lot of people were like, were, were, are they really the White House bowling team? And they were. Like, they, I think they had a uh, groundskeepers team. They had, like, a secret service team. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, they had their own league. And then I think the different teams competed. That was pretty fun. Yeah. In 1955, President Eisenhower closed the two White House bowling lanes uh, and built a new one next door. Uh, then Nixon closed that one and built a single uh, lane alley right below the White House's North Portico entrance. And I don't know, like, they keep moving around these bowling lanes, but I think I think this one's here to stay. I hope the history of bowling was more interesting than you expected. Now you can tell your friends about the strange bowling tradition in the Church of Germany, the famous Boston Bowling Excavation, and the White House Bowling League. Before we go, let me just plug the YouTube channel and the Instagram. The YouTube channel is also called The History Of... And we also have an Instagram called The History of Podcast, and the link is in the show notes. You should totally go check those out. If you have any questions or comments about the information provided in the episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day. And you've got to promise me something. Never stop learning. <laughs>